right, have at it. Have you uh, put anybody on PUP today? No, so you guys, you know, you guys all saw the news with uh, Dar Darrell Luter. Uh, he was put on at, a, at an earlier date. Uh, to come, you know, we still have physicals, but to come, uh, Mitch Wisnowski could be a guy that, that, that would actually go on NFI. He tweaked his back, uh, just lifting weights away from here. And so he may be an NFI situation, which is really the same rules as a, as a PUP, just uh, didn't do it here. Um, but uh, Specifically Brock Purdy? Uh, Brock's, Brock's cleared and, and ready to go. Um, uh, he's, he's, he's been cleared. He's uh, going to be without restrictions. Now, having said that, um, we're sticking and we're adhering to a, a plan that's been put in place for, for some time. And um, he got after it the last couple of days. We upped his pitch count, so it was kind of the peak of the buildup. And so he'll, he'll take off uh, day one. And uh, But, you know, we believe in that plan. So he's cleared without restriction. There will be some time off, you know, due to, due to pitch count and all that, sticking to the plan. But the great news is Brock has worked his tail off and, and he's ready to go. Safe to say he will be the well, Kyle. Will, will he be the the quarterback who takes the first reps with this team? Will he be running with the first team offense? The little wings out there. Um, the throwing plan plans a little different. We're never gonna have him go three days in a row. And so, like today, he threw um, just with the schedule from the weekend and everything. So today he threw. So tomorrow he won't practice. So the other guys will do the same thing as OTAs. They'll both go with the ones. Um, and then Brock will have practices two and three to go. Um, he'll take the next one off. So. That that time frame that you know that was cited was three months, you know, three month ramp up program. It's been two months uh, since he started throwing. Yeah. I mean, obviously, but is it right. safe to say that he's ahead of schedule? You know, Dr. Meister, every, everybody had always said. Now remember, we're just we're speaking in timelines. Um, you know, these these are guidelines, but there's markers along the way. He's continued to hit his markers. Um, to the point where Dr. Meister, Dr. McAdams, they felt comfortable. Our guys felt comfortable. A lot of that's a testament to, to Brock and his his work work ethic, uh, some good genes, and uh, I think it's all good news. Is there a time frame for when he'll be just full go? You know, three days in a row, keep going like normal. Um, yeah, but you know, I think the goal is a couple weeks from now. I haven't looked that far past. Um, we won't change that till that happens, and as long as they keep staying on the course, then we'll eventually go all the way. As far as uh, the quarterback tomorrow, will it be like the spring where you'll alternate Sam and, and Trey as the, with, with the ones? Uh, um, most likely. Um, we're going to go through that this afternoon as the coaches. So that is most likely what we're going to do. But I hope you guys will allow me to change my mind. You know, we do it differently. But we'll make sure it's even for them, whether we split it up that one day or we get one one practice and the guy the next one that Brock's not there. And are you guys going three days on, one day off this, this year, this summer? Yeah, that was our goal last year, too. But the NFL had a mandatory welcome back to NFL practice that was on our fourth day, so we didn't have a choice. So we, we only did four in a row, the first four, because of that mandatory back thing, back to work, I guess, that everyone did. Uh, we don't have that this time, so we're able to do three the whole time. Where does Ben stand with that Nick Bosa and his yeah. extension? So look, every everyone, our first, uh, everybody's report today, 12.30 is our first kind of event as a team. That will be our conditioning test, our tempo run, as we call it. And, um, you know, I've seen various players, have not seen Nick. And, you know, I, I would expect he's not here to start off. Um, we're, we're working. We're having really good communication with Brian Awell. He's got good, competent, and, and you know, uh, people we have an immense amount of respect for um, working for him. And we're working diligently to try to uh, to come to an agreement. Um, I think the challenges. You're talking about a real special player. You're talking about one of the better players in the league. You could argue that could simplify things, but I think at times it's just finding that sweet spot and where the right spot. And we're committed to uh, to working towards that. Um, just spoke with Brian this morning. You, you know, we're also committed. You guys might have heard Mike Brown today. We're, we're going to keep things private. I, I always appreciated that as a player. I, I feel like they're. There's some sanctity to those things. You don't want everything being aired out. And so we've agreed with Brian and Nick uh, to keep our dealings private. So I think that's the extent of what I'll say. And when there's updates, we'll give them to you. And would you expect him to practice, get on the field of practice with his teammates without a new contract? I wouldn't. That would surprise me. 
that would surprise you. And that's that's a mutual decision, coach or a team and and the player. We want all our players to be here. We've got a pretty good track record of having our guys here and done, you know, with contracts. Right. So, uh, you know, like I said, this one may be perhaps a little more complex and, and uh, with, with timelines there, but I'll tell you that we're working hard. We have good communication and, and we got to keep doing that. And, uh, to, with the trend of yeah, players holding. Interest is mutual. With the trend of players holding in, is there an expectation that he might show up but then not practice? I think it's different in his situation because he doesn't, I forget what the fifth year option or whatever, he's not going to find 50000 a day. Um, so he's not in that same situation. Yeah. Reports from Trey Lance since he's been back. Did you talk to him throughout his work with Jeff Christensen? Uh, yeah, Trey and I will FaceTime here and there over 40 days away. And um, Trey's in a great spot. He's pumped to be back. Feeling as good as he has, and he had great OTAs, and really excited to get started for this. Did you guys tell Trey to work with Jeff Christensen, recommend Jeff Christensen, or did Trey find him on his own? No, we, yeah, he found him on his own. We never really picked who they work with. They all have different guys. Can you guys just describe what you're, you've seen out of Brock and, and his throwing with the velocity of it. And you said you ramped him up, so what, what are you seeing from him so far? We don't get to see a lot because we're not out there in person with them, but. Videos sent to me all the time on my 40 days away, and I'm allowed to watch from my window, so I got to see that pretty good this morning. Um, and he looks like Brock, and that's when you are talking to like quarterbacks who've had this and stuff before. Like, I remember um, talking to Steve Berlin, um, and he had this, and it was so scary. But kind of what he told me is, is how it usually goes it's, it's a clean thing, even though it takes a while, but they always say like six to nine months because it is clean, and if everything goes right, you can do all your stuff. I just remember him telling me it most likely would be like that because it was for him. And um, just watching Brock go through it and watching all the steps and the milestones that he had to get to and watch him throw every day, it, it looked like that. So you, I always thought in my mind, just so I wouldn't be disappointed, it would take a few weeks in camp. But he always looked like he would be ready because you didn't see any setbacks. And just talking to other guys, that's how it ended up. And um, watching it on our own, I thought it would go that way. But you don't really say that. You wait to hear it from Brock. And, um, to get back and talk to him last week and just to hear how he felt just mentally and being able to see physically, um, he's ready to go. So, well, I, I, you know, I think he deserves a ton of credit for the work he's put in. There's a lot of people involved, Dr. Meister. You know, I really sent him a message today how much I appreciated him sticking to his guns. Remember the delay in the surgery. Would have been really easy to succumb to pressure. A lot of people whose uh, livelihoods depended on that. He made the decision that was best for him, and ultimately, I think that proved right. And uh, you know, everybody from Ben Peterson, Dustin Little, who worked tirelessly, Ryan Donahue uh, with Brock, I think they've done one heck of a job. Um, down to the foot switch with throwing guys down in Jacksonville, been spending some time there the last few weeks. Done a really, really good job, and from all accounts, he's, he's doing really well. It's, it's been a cool process. Did you guys check in with Nick Mullins at all to see, you know, any pipeline, anything with that pipe or anything? I didn't, but it's, I knew, I remember when Nick did it, and that was his last time, time with us, and just hearing how bad it was, I was like, man, he's not going to be able to do it next year, probably, in the preseason. He wasn't with us, so I didn't investigate a lot of it, but I remember watching him right there in the preseason. Um, so, yeah, I kind of had the same feeling just from his results. How how pleased are you with the work Trey done with Jeff Christensen, and how different does he look as a thrower to you, or does he look different? He looks healthier. I mean, um, I think his feet look better. I mean, I don't. I think sometimes I, I give. I mean, I'm not taking away anything from Jeff, um, but Trey has put all the work in, and it's awesome that he had a guy that he can do that stuff with. But it's, it's exactly what Brock did. It's what Sam Donald does. You never had a quarterback that doesn't do that. They they all do that. Um, it's like golf pros that go to work on things with their swing and stuff like that. And I think the most important time is after the season in March, April, before OTAs. And it's always extremely important um, the 40 days away. Trey's done that the last few years. Uh, he's one of the different guys this year. Has Brock lost any velocity on, on his football that you guys can tell since the surgery? Um, I mean, we're watching from afar. I mean, he's easing into it. Um, so we're not asking, we haven't seen his max velocity. I'm not trying to see that yet. It'll be back to how it was. I was hoping for like a rookie of the year type thing. You see it maybe when you're younger. Uh, <laughs> come back all of a sudden, like the fastest on the planet. But um, I think it's going to be the same. We just we got to see him in person a little bit more out there with players and stuff. And I know the data says no. You know, they they had it. They, you know, they have the GPS wearables these yeah. guys all wear these days, and, and uh, it, it's it's good.
you're coming so close to the last few years. I know there's no way to predict how long a window is open to win a championship, but how much do you guys sense that urgency to get this done with this core of players, you know, and, and get over the hump and win the whole thing? Every day. I mean, every day we feel it. It's our jobs, and uh, we, we've got a lot of belief in this team. That's uh, that's that's why you go get a Javon Hargrave and add him to the mix, even though um, we've got a lot of you know, highly compensated players because you've got belief in this group. Without that belief in this group that we currently have, the culture, belief in this guy and his ability to lead this organization, uh, you don't do those things. But we, we have that much belief. That's what we're here for. And uh, now we got to go do it. Uh, Kyle talks a lot. His dad used to talk a lot when I played for him. All you want in this league is a chance. And not everybody has that chance. We're a team that has a chance with the way we're constructed, the way we're coached the character in that locker room, the talent in that locker room. Now it's our players' jobs to take that ownership. It's all of our jobs to uh, to give it our best shot. We do have a chance, and, and um, you know, I think we have a really good one. I, I like this group as it's constructed, and um, there's a lot to like. Now we got to go do it. Kyle, how, how do you feel that? I feel the same. I mean, it's one of the reasons we came here. You know, I, um, I mean, we talked to Jed and everything, just the, the commitment he wanted to have them over we use as a first class organization, which is just do everything the right way and every year to try to give yourself a chance. Um, and it's hard to do that in this league. Um, we felt, you know, the first two years we were here, um, we worked really hard to get there. And I thought we did. And really since year three, I thought we've been in that position every year and we feel no different this year. Um, usually by this time of year, going into a camp, especially after putting everything together all off season, we always feel the best we felt compared to other years in the past. But that's what our goal is to be, and that's what our goal is to be next year, too, and to keep doing that. But um, all we have is a chance, and not everyone does. And now it's what do we do with that, and it has to do with what we do going forward. How hard do we work? How hard do these guys work when they're away, which allows them to, you know, us to get better in this month? How good are we in week one, and how good are we in week 17? And what do you do in those three or two playoff games? So there's a lot that goes into it, and um, we like where we're at right now, but um, now it's time to start. Yeah, I don't know if it's... Talked to Debo at the last uh, mini camp. He was pretty harsh in his self assessment on how he played last year. He said it was awful. And he said he sat down and watched the film with you, and that was part of the reason that he came to that decision in terms of his own self criticism. I'm curious what, how you look back at his season. Was he a disappointment last year at all, or is he just being self critical, or how would you describe that? Um, I mean, I, I love, I mean, I don't think Debo had to be that harsh on himself to you guys, but it was cool to watch. Um, Debo's one of the best players in this league, and um, anytime he doesn't play like one of the best players in this league, he, oh, everyone's going to be disappointed, and including myself. And I think that was the case. Um, it's all on a, it's all on a, it's a fine line to say that he was awful, just because he wasn't one of the best players in the league. I think he was disappointed. Um, I think he can get back to playing a little bit more like he did in 21. I think he took one small step back, but that doesn't mean he can take two steps forward. And, where Debo was at, I think the last time you guys saw him, showed that his mind was right to get back to that spot. And, um, that's what's been real cool with him in these 40 days away. Just seeing him yesterday for the first time. Never had a grown man send me so many pictures of his shirt off. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I can tell he's put the work in. So I know you guys heard him that day. That's the last time I really heard him. But I see better than I hear. And um, Debo's in a really good spot. I'm really excited. John, we spoke about Craig Williams on the exit interviews last season and about that quote he had considering retirement at some point. How was the offseason for him? What were those conversations like for you both with Trent? He's never told us that, so <laughs> and I'm, I'm glad. Trent's, uh, man, he's still playing at such a high level. He's a special player. I mean, he's, a, he's a rare, uh, you know, I think, to, to the, I've played with some greats, but you think of the very, you know, the saps, the Derek Brooks, and the Trent is in that ilk. And, He's a special human being, um, special athlete, and uh, he's always ready. And provided he's having fun, and I think provided he believes that we have a chance to go compete, he's still in this thing very much. And uh, we're, we're very grateful for that. Uh, he, he's a pro, he really is. He kind of does it quietly, but uh, his game is not quiet at all. He, uh, he's, uh, he's, a, he's a unique athlete. Really, over time, I've gotten to know him. I think he's a unique uh, person. You know, got, got some unique character to him, and, and uh, so he's the total package. And when you have that total package with a guy with that that much ability, you, you 
got the ability to be special, and that's exactly what it is for us. And John, I realize you're just starting this, this season, but as you look to 2024 and the salary cap commitments that you have, yeah. um, is that going to be the most potentially kind of creative financial dance you'll have to do? And does any of that kind of factor into the complexity of versus contract help? Well, we're, we're always forecasting. You know, I'm blessed to work with some really talented people with, with Prague and Brian Hampton um, and, and their group. And uh, they do a tremendous job of always looking out. That's our job is to look out and forecast out three years and not just think about this year. And uh, we had the pedal down, sure. And, uh, but is it doable? Yeah, we, we, we believe, you know, we've budgeted for a lot of things and, and uh, we, we always want to stay aggressive. We want to push the limits. We have ownership that allows us that opportunity to do it. At some point, um, you know, there's some realities that have to happen, and that we're no different. Everybody plays under the same system, so that's our challenge. 24, there will be some challenges, but, but we prepared for a lot of that and confident we can make it work and still keep our team very, very uh, competitive. Well, what's the structure like under Prague? I know now with the Leeds acquisition, he probably has to be in two places at once. So, who are the other guys that that really? Deserve kind of a spotlight here for well, as we, you know, Hamp is, is uh, as we refer to him, Brian Hamp. And he's, he's uh, you know, Brian's done a lot here for a lot of years. Oftentimes behind the scenes, um, you know, Frog's group is, has been a very talented one. Uh, Jeff Diamond's another guy. Jeff Meyer. Those are the names, but they're really good workers. And collectively, you know, we, we can do it. Frog's going to have some responsibility with leads, but he's had that. So not a lot has changed. I guess the the the. Uh, Enormity of his role, maybe, and uh, you know, focus and attention. Prague's a multitasker; he, he does things well, and uh, you know, we're confident in our ability to, to handle these things as they come. John, can you say three more? Can you clarify this: uh, Luder's injury and whether you need a, a replacement for him. Uh, no, we don't with Mitch. It's nothing we're concerned about long term. But you know, with the back, you want those things to quiet down uh, before they. You know, if you don't, they can become chronic. So we want to put that put that. Uh, to rest, and uh, we don't think it's too serious. Now, Luter, uh, you know, in, in one of the last OTAs, hyperextended his knee. It, it resulted in a, uh, a deep bone bruise. Uh, he's working his way back, still has a few weeks. Um, he's a kid who really had impressed us uh, throughout the whole draft process, but then in his work here, sharp kid. Uh, that's, that's a tall order for a rookie, you know, especially not getting all the reps. We believe he's somewhat, we'll see, you know, he's got to prove it, but he's uniquely equipped because he's a really smart, he's like wise beyond his years has been our experience with him. Now he's got to go do it, but, and he, I can, I can tell you his, uh, he never left here. His focus on the rehab was, was just excellent. So he's trending really well, but it's, it is going to take some time. So not ideal, but that's, that's where it is. Cal, it is, might not be different than years past, but when you have Brock going to be the number one, how do you, work that backup situation as far as trying to get enough reps for Trey, who got all the reps last year, Trey and Sam Darnold, and then while mixing Brandon Allen in there too. Is it is it a bigger challenge this year than, than in years past? It is, just because, um, I mean, just there's more musical chairs with just one guy not always there and take some days off. The fact that um, I was planning, because I was trying to be safe, that we have to still a couple weeks before Brock came back, so the thought was always that we could just keep it going the same with Trey and I'm Sam. But I also was ready that this could happen, so the fact that this did happen is good. But, um, you know, Brandon came on and did a um, really good job in OTAs. Um, so that's to me what makes it a little bit harder um, how to fit in a fourth guy. Um, but he earned that. Uh, so that's what we're going to have to figure out as a staff with reps and everything. The ones and twos, pretty much, they get the same reps. Um, so it's not a problem with the ones and twos. And threes are the ones who don't get as much. Um, I keep reminding Brock, you know, who might get stressed out, he's missing today or something. I keep reminding him all he got were three reps last year um, for a long, for like the first month. So he's going to have a lot more reps regardless of what happens this year. Um, but that's now what we got to figure out for the twos because Sudfeld got those mainly with the twos last year. Now we're going to split those up with those guys, and I know they'll bleed into the threes. But when it's said and done, hopefully it'll balance out. I know we're going to give them all an off, and that's also why uh, those preseason games will probably be a little bit more for these guys, too, than they have been in the past. Right. There are reasons. Which Christian McCaffrey gets after it during OTAs. I mean, it's pretty noticeable. I'm curious what training camp is. How much do you have 
have to sort of tone him down, or is he good about backing off himself, or how do you get him through week one? Um, Christian's a very conscientious guy. He knows everything that goes in his body, every step he takes, everything. He's a psycho in that way, in a very good way. Um, so you don't have to worry too much about it um, from our standpoint because he's pretty communicative with us. But um, you know, we, uh, we have a plan with him. Um, we have a plan with a number of our guys. Um, and usually our plan is pretty good. So they don't sometimes they ask us for more. Usually. So it, I bet it will play out all right, but Christian's not a guy who would ever have a problem coming and telling us, hey, I need to shut it down for a couple of days. But the way this is, the way it's three days on, one day off, the way we high-low our reps, the number of guys that you have in the positions. Um, we've always given bet days and stuff. It's really hard to give a bet day now because kind of, the whole team has it naturally. Um, but that's stuff that we know we need our guys ready for the season. It's our job and them to make sure they're ready to go on the season. Sometimes it's really tough just to get to week one. And if you just get to week one, it's really tough to be there in week four. Um, so we've got to make sure we build these guys the right way. And when you have a guy like Christian who did OTAs the way he did, um, the way he does really probably every single day except for probably three weeks right after the season, um, you don't worry about it too much. You don't have to do as much on the training camp. There were a couple guys on the side field during minicamp, uh, Dre Greenlaw, Juwan Jennings. Any updates on them, Elijah Mitchell? They're all, we haven't got it from everyone, but we've talked about everyone so far that of the only possibility it's a pup so all those guys should be good that's what everyone's going through their physicals now so it's not finalized but there's no one on our mind to expect them not to be ready that we haven't mentioned Grant's last one apologies if this is too touchy feely but the last you know three of the last four years the way the season has ended you like pushed the boulder almost all the way up the hill and then fell down I mean is it something you have to discuss with the team like some sort of psychological toll something you know, that's kind of kind of looming there that you need to address or you just like do I mean just like you know, for the two years ago I'd like to address them better on second and one and third and one so we don't get the ball back to the Rams and then if we do maybe catch that pick or don't get that whole shot down the middle um, the last game okay, we all kind of know how that went um, so there's things we got to get better and get to that point at our goal is to make the playoffs and then our goal is to have two games at home because we all know what everyone's ultimate goal is. And so we kind of look at it in that stride, but to sit there and make some mental thing out of stuff, I don't think it has been a mental thing. I think we've had our opportunities. That last game last year was a little bit different just because of the situation that none of us had experienced just playing that whole half without a quarterback. Um, and the year before, there was things we had to get better to finish. Um, I felt like we did. Um, we got to make sure we get back to at least where we were last year, and we got to take steps forward to get better. But no, we don't make too much of a deal out of that stuff. I think I like it because our players have experience doing that stuff. There wasn't, there's not many guys here from 2019. Um, there's, we lost a lot of guys here last year, but there's so many people in our building that have been in an NFC Championship game or a Super Bowl. And once you do do that, you know how different the NFL is. Um, like I felt bad for guys like Ayuk and stuff with their rookie years or their COVID year. And all they got to see were no fans in the stands and we didn't have the best record and we had to live in a hotel for a month and they, they don't they don't get the passion quite the same almost every guy on our team has felt that passion getting that close and that's to me what makes the off the, the off season so much better that's why guys work differently and stuff because when you get close it usually makes you stronger i think um, if you're willing to go through it again it's a long road to get there and that's why you got to do stuff in the right season but when you get close Thanks, guys. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank you.